Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be starting several different types of seeds using the winter sowing method, which is just a way to start seeds early on in the season in the middle of winter outside. Now there are a couple of things to know to have success with this method. I've been doing it for four or five years and I've been able to work out a couple of kinks that I ran into, like how to properly label them so that you don't forget what's in the in your containers, what type of soil to use, that sort of thing. But the main thing is knowing what type of seeds you can start in winter sowing and you can google it you know what kind of seeds can i start using the winter sowing method and you can find more full lists than i'm going to probably give you today but there are three basic categories i look for number one perennial if it's perennial in your area it will most likely do really well with this type of seed starting. Uh, second thing are cool season vegetable crops. Anything that you usually plant for your spring garden, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, greens, anything like that. And then number three or third category is the frost tolerant annuals. So those types of annuals that are tough, they can handle a light frost, snapdragons, larkspur, bachelor's buttons, there's a whole bunch of them. I'll show you what I'm gonna be planting today here in a second. But the other thing to have success with this method is knowing what type of container to use. And boy, you can find all kinds of different things people have come up with, very creative ways. Basically, any type of container that will create a greenhouse kind of dome over your seedlings. Uh, and then also something that will allow light to come in because we're utilizing outside temperatures, one, outside light and outside moisture. So these are really perfect. These are just used water containers that I've saved. I think I've got 16 or 17 of them sitting here on the table. So that's how many we're gonna plant today. But these are perfect because even though they're not clear, plastic they're still that kind of milky and you can see through them and they allow plenty of light in there's also a hole on the top we're going to take the caps off of all of these <laughs> maybe um, and that way we can utilize any natural moisture that falls from the sky any snow or rain uh, we will be watering them in once today and if you live in an area that gets enough rain you may not have to water them again until you're ready to plant the seedlings in our area we usually have long dry spells so i sometimes have to supplemental water but it's easy to just stick your little mister nozzle right in that hole and water your seedlings we also make sure to pop some drain holes in the bottom you can see i already cut four in this one and then I cut it in half. See that I cut it in half, but not all the way. I left a little piece right by the handle right here to where we've got like a little hinge. So this is our soil reservoir with drain holes. We'll plant our seeds and then we're gonna tape this thing shut all the way so that no air gets inside. So after we have the seeds planted and we've got the little greenhouses taped up, we set them right outside. Um, I set them in a nice sunny spot where they're gonna receive the light they need. I make sure that they're not under cover so that they can receive moisture. And then what those seeds will do is sort of wake up on a natural rhythm. They'll be maybe a little bit ahead because they do have a little extra heat trapped around them with the little dome on top, uh, but not a huge amount ahead. They just are stronger seedlings it's a way where you don't have to have grow lights, you don't have to have a setup, no heat mats, uh, you don't have to water them twice a day, you know, to keep them moist and keep them happy. Uh, they just usually are stronger seedlings for it and you can really pack the seeds in. You don't have to do, you know, just a few little seeds in here. You can pack them in and then separate the seedlings later when you're ready to plant them out. And I hope that that all made sense. Maybe it'll make more sense once I show you the uh, process here. So the supplies I'm using for this, I mean, this is it. To get them from seed to plant, we need our reservoir, our container, whatever you're using. Some people have used Ziploc bags. I've seen people use um, like totes, clear totes, that sort of thing. I do like to label them not only on the outside of the container, but I like to write a label and put it on the inside because even if we use a marker that doesn't wear off quite as fast, it still wears off. Uh, and sometimes it's just nice to have, have something on the inside. We've got tape that we're gonna be using to tape up our little cut here. We've got our seeds and then I'm using regular potting soil, not seed starting mix, which I have used before and I had a fine time with it, uh, but I did notice it dried out a little faster than regular potting mix. And when you're starting seeds this way, you can use the standard stuff rather than a special mix. And then this is what I've got. Now I've only got 17 containers, so I'm gonna have to probably pare it down a little bit. But for our vegetables, I'm going to be doing some golden acre cabbage and bell star broccoli. And then for our annual flowers, I've got cherry caramel phlox, which is a cool season annual. I've tried direct seeding it out in the cut flower garden twice without very much luck. So I'm really hopeful that this is gonna be the way to go. I've got some nigella, 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of different varieties. I probably won't start all of them. We've got Larkspur, again, several different varieties right here. We've got Feverfew White Stars. And then I've got a perennial grass, the Blue Grandma Grass. This is the one we have up above our pond and I absolutely love it. We've got Verbascum. Oh, so we're into perennials now. So this is a perennial grass. Uh, this is Verbascum Shades of Summer, and I started some of these inside last year, had great success, but I want to try it with this method this time. We've got Silvery Lupin. Lupins I usually have real good luck with, with winter sowing. I've got Lickness right here, which I don't know a tremendous amount about, except for it does say it's a hardy perennial. It's a wildflower with ragged pink petals, ideal for damp areas of the garden, so we'll see how that goes. Echinacea purpurea, great one to start. Freckle face blackberry lily right here. I've got a packet right here of double pink columbine that Darla sent out. Isn't that beautiful? Columbine is a great one for this method. And then I've got some delphinium right here. Pacific Giants mix. So when picking out your seeds, just look for the words perennial, cool season, cold hardy, frost tolerant, self sows because if you think about it you know a lot of our plants out here even annual plants they produce seed and then drop it late summer or fall and then it sits on the ground all throughout winter and then magically it sprouts again the next year so we're kind of doing a little bit more of a controlled environment of the same sort of thing. We're giving these seeds the cold period that some of them actually require in order to germinate and we're just helping them along using these containers and we have the ability to plant them exactly where we want them. Oftentimes when things self-sow, sometimes it's okay and I'm happy about that and sometimes I don't want things to self-sow everywhere. So this is just more of a controlled way of doing it. In order to do this the most efficient way possible, I have learned not to do just one at a time all the way from start to finish. I'm going to assembly line this. We're going to prep all of our containers first which means taking the lids off of everything popping drain holes in first I usually do four Ooh. so we've got four on the bottom of each jug and then I'm gonna cut my jug in half Not all the way, remember to leave that little spot to where you still have a hinge, like that. So we're gonna prep all of these first, just like that, so drain holes cut almost all the way in half, and then I'm gonna line up all my seeds, we'll decide what's gonna go in each one of our containers, I'll make my labels, and that way we'll do all of that before I get my hands super dirty mixing up soil. Also, I forgot to mention, clean out the inside of your container if it contained anything other than water. All of these uh, had water in them, so I don't have to rinse them out, but if they had milk or orange juice or anything else, you wanna give them a good clean first. All right, so we have prepped these containers as much as we can before we get to the actual soil part of the project. So all the containers are ready to go, drain holes cut in half, caps removed. All of the seeds have been lined up so I know what's going in each one of them, and I made a tag to put on the inside. Now we need to prep our soil. I'm going to pour it into this uh, tray right here. We're gonna pre-moisten it. Just like we do in any other seed starting project. So we put moisture in it just to the point where it's damp and it kind of holds a form if you squeeze it together, but not to a point where there's water dripping out of it.
holding a form. No water's coming out. <laughs> Perfect. So now I'm going to use this as my scooper. Scoop up some of this moist soil and we're going to fill up all of our containers. Okay, all have been filled with soil at this point, so now we need to plant our seeds. And to do that, I just follow the instructions on the back of the seed packet. So this one says to press the seeds into the surface. I do try to make sure, because I didn't do a real precise job of filling them, hang on. I make sure that I've pressed the soil down just a little bit, not really hard, but I wanna make sure that there's no air pockets in there, just like when you're planting anything else. Okay, so our tag's gonna go in first, Shades of Summer Verbascum. These seeds are tiny, so I'm just gonna spread them kind of thick in here. And it says to just press them into the surface, so. That is what we do. Now, if you wanted to, you could come along with a tiny bit of vermiculite. In drier climates, this may be helpful because it does help uh, retain a little bit more moisture on the surface, but it's certainly not a necessary step. It's something that I do on all of my inside seed starting trays, and I started doing it after I read a seed packet. I think it was maybe for foxglove. It said to do that and that it would help with damping off, which is a fungal thing that happens with brand new seedlings. Uh, in winter sowing, that's something that you really don't have to worry about at all, um, but it also helps retain a little bit of moisture when you're very first starting to get them to germinate. Uh, it can be hard sometimes to keep the soil wet, especially Especially if you're working you know away from the home and you can't monitor the seeds 24 7 so I did find that it's helpful for inside seed sowing but it's not something I do usually for winter sowing so I'm gonna do that for all of these we're gonna get all the seeds in and then we're gonna come back through and water them all in with our sprayer so we press our soil in just lightly Pacific Giants Delphinium these seeds are a little bigger this one wants 1 8 inch seed planting depth well, that's plenty. So in that case, I just turn the soil over a little bit. If you have extra soil left, you could just take a little handful and go over the top. Okay, we should be good there. They are all full of seeds and they've been watered in. I just use my little pump sprayer to do that. It's just a really quick, easy water in just to settle the seeds. And that's why it's so important to pre-moisten the soil. It helps with so many things. It just helps to settle everything in nicely. The soil's naturally heavier when you put it in the container, so it helps prevent the air pockets. And if you were to plant seeds right on top of uh, dry soil, and this goes for seed starting in any type of container in any situation when you initially water in that like spray of water like puffs the soil up it creates water channels and it can move your seeds around so it's just better to pre-moisten i i think also a step you can skip with winter sowing is soaking your seed so if you have a type of seed like sweet peas this is perfect winter sowing is perfect for sweet peas but if your packet says to soak the seed overnight and then maybe nick it with a file like a nail file the next day right before you plant it which what that does is it helps us soften the coating around the seed, which is oftentimes on those very hard. Uh, and then when you nick it with a file, it allows a point for the seed to germinate out of. In this situation, you don't have to do that because your seed is going to be just naturally a lot more moist for a lot longer. It naturally softens that seed coating and does it all for you. So now this is our last step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close up our little greenhouses here. We're gonna tape them shut. And then I'm going to write the variety name again on the tape. 
I've done it before where you write it on the top of the container, which is convenient because you can see it easily, but it always wears off. So this is the Albion Green Pod Nigella. That's perfect right there. It doesn't matter what color the tape is. I just happen to have a little bit of white left over. You can use regular. Okay, a little sloppy, but you get the drift. So that's it. Like this one, you can now pick it up like this. This one is ready to go outside. So now I need to do that on all the rest of them. Here they are, and this is where they will stay until we're ready to plant our seedlings out. Now I do have them in a spot where it can snow or rain right on top of them, which is totally fine. There's Douglas. In fact, if they get covered in snow, it's not gonna harm the process. But I did put them on the east side of the greenhouse just to protect them from any wind so that they don't topple over. If we have long dry periods or if it is particularly windy, I can come along with our sprayer and you just stick the nozzle right in the top. Douglas, you gotta quit rubbing on everything. And you just give them a quick spray like that, just to make sure they stay moist in there. But that's usually something you don't even have to worry about with the winter sowing method. It's just a really interesting approach and it's something that you don't need any special equipment for. I mean, tape, a marker, your seeds and soil, and then containers that most of us naturally have, you know, coming out of our house anyway. So it's a really fun way to be able to recycle them. You can clean them too and use them from year to year if you want to. But I just like that there is a method out there where you don't need grow lights. You don't need uh, to take up space inside your house. The only drawback to these is that they don't look awesome. But you know what? This whole area doesn't look very awesome. <laughs> so they're in good company. And what I like to do is just keep my supplies out and at the ready. So when we have another container from the house that can be used for this, I can just run it out and I've got everything there. And I can just pop another container out here. I'm trying to think if there are any details that I'm missing. There are so many gardeners who swear by this method of seed starting and I've had really good luck with it too. And I've had to make adjustments, you know, first couple of years or first year rather, I used the seed starting mix rather than the regular potting mix. And I also labeled them in a way that wasn't good. So now I have kind of refined that process where I usually go wrong is all the years prior to this one, I've tucked these jugs somewhere where I can't see them because they don't look awesome. But what happens is they fall between the cracks because if you don't see them, if they're not you know, right in front of your face, sometimes they just, you just forget about them, especially in the spring when you're so busy. And it is important to remove the top, take the top off and flip that top off of those seedlings once it gets warm enough for them to handle it. Uh, but you know, seeds that start this way are usually so much stronger than seedlings that you have inside you don't have that uh, hardening off period, which is so great. You can just pop these seeds right from their container right out into the ground and they're just gonna go for it. You don't have that like shock period. But you do wanna make sure to pop those tops off when it's getting a little bit warmer out and not forget about them if it's dry and windy gonna keep them moist. Anyway guys, that is it for today. Super happy to have these containers all done. What is that? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, yeah, 17 all together today. And I'll probably add a few more to the mix before the end of winter. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.